Hello everybody. Today we're going to work on a chapter 10 problem that's going to deal with work and power. This is going to be a quick one today. Normally you're very used to the situation where you have a mass that's being lifted or something like that. And I can take this mass, I can multiply it by gravity to figure out how much force is needed to lift it at a constant velocity. Then you simply have to multiply in the displacement that the object is being lifted and you can easily calculate the work done. This problem's not very different from that except the information is given to you in a slightly different way. And so I just need to make sure you understand what you're supposed to do with it. In this problem you're given the density of some salt water and you're also given the volume of the salt water here. And you will recall that our expression for density deals with mass which is right here and volume which is right there. And this is going to be our linker between mass and volume. And so we're going to start with this known volume, we're going to loop through the density and we're going to come back here and we're going to find the mass. And as soon as we do that we're effectively at the same place as this simple little problem that I kind of laid out before. The only other thing that we need to really watch for in this problem is our units. If I condense my information down, I know that the height is 1.3 meters that this quantity of water needs to be lifted. And so here's this chunk of water here. I know the density is 1.04 grams per centimeter cubed. And I also know this information about being able to lift 5 liters per 1.5 minutes. So let's see what we need to do. Part A says, what is the work done to lift one liter of salt water? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what mass of salt water that is. And so again, I'm going to use this relationship. I need to make sure my units are working out for me. Ultimately, I would like to be in kilometers up there for my mass. So that means this density down here, I'm going to need to change that to kilometers. Also, my information is given in terms of liters, and so I'm going to alter this volume element down there of the density too so that I can be in liters. So I start with 1.04 grams per one cubic centimeter. You may recall that one cubic centimeter is actually equal to one milliliter, so that's a one-to-one -one conversion. Then also 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. So there I am getting rid of milliliters and cubic centimeters. And lastly, I'll come down here and I'll say that there are 1,000 grams and one kilogram. So now I've gotten rid of grams and I'm left with liters and kilograms. You'll notice that there is a thousand in the numerator and there's also a thousand in the denominator and those will cancel. All of this work was done in order for me to actually figure out that the density of this salt water is 1.04 grams per cubic centimeter is also equivalent to this number right here. The same identical number. And in fact that's one of those ones I like to just commit to memory that it is about one kilogram for a liter. So those Nalgene bottles everybody carries around. One of those full of water is about one kilogram. So now I have that quantity and I have that that is mass divided by volume and I'm gonna stick with one liter for just a moment and so one liter. Multiply this over to the other side, that's going to cancel those liters out. And so really in part A what I'm doing is I'm finding the amount of work it takes to lift something with a mass of 1.04 kilograms because that is the same thing there as one liter of this particular salt water. Let me clear a little board space here. So here's my 1.04 kilograms and that is being lifted. Let's assume it's done at a constant velocity so that I don't have to worry about any acceleration or anything. You'll notice that my force vector and my displacement vector are pointing in the same direction which is great. That means I'm not going to have the complicating factor of using that dot product, that scalar product where I have to account for the different angles and so really I just have those two things being multiplied together. So there's an applied force that has to be used to pull this water up and it's going to counter the FG, the weight of the object, and those are going to be equal and opposite. So the FG down here is equal to mass times gravity, which is equal to 1.04 kg multiplied 
by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So I'm going to round this to about negative 10.2 newtons, which means this applied force up here is a positive 10.2 newtons because again it's equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. And that's the applied force that's coming from the pump. So for part A, I will find that the work is going to be equal to that upward force of 10.2 newtons multiplied by this 1.3 meters that it needs to be risen. And I will get 13.25, we'll call it, and that's joules. Remember, a newton times a meter is the same thing as a joule. So there's my answer to part A. For part B, I need to be a little bit careful. It says, what is the power of the filtering system? Now with power, I just come up here and I take the work divided by the time. But what you need to be careful of is that I don't necessarily want this particular work right there. Recall that work doesn't say anything about how long it takes to do something. That's where we bring in the idea of power. And if we look at my information that was given that has to do with the rate that the water's lifted, you'll see that I have five liters for every 1.5 minutes. And hopefully you recognize that minutes are not going to do anything for me. So really what I have is five liters per 90 seconds. Well, the amount of work that I just found over here was all based on one liter, if you recall. So if it takes 13.25 joules of work for one liter, then it's going to take some unknown amount of work for five liters and I simply just need to multiply that 13 number by five and I'll get 66.25 joules. So that's the amount of work that it takes per 90 seconds. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to use this power equation. So I'm going to say that the power is equal to 66.25 joules divided by 90 seconds. And you see here that I will have a joule per second, which is indeed a watt. So I know that my units are working out. So I find that the power of this pump is 0 0.736 watts. And that is it for this particular problem. So hopefully that made sense. Really, we just had to know how to work with the density quantity. and We had to make sure we were watching our units. So if that did make sense to you, you should let your computer know.